Greetings, students. Let's discuss the first test of fourth quarter. Um, again, first uh, questions here, what you're going to do on all of these, you're going to type them in the calculator. So we got our T84 here. And we'll stat, add it. Make sure column 1's here. If column 1's not here, what you have to do, quit out, go to the memory, reset the memory, and column 1 will be there. Again, if you get rid of column one, it's pretty easy to get rid of column one by deleting it at the top. And if you delete it at the top, it's gone. And you see, now I got no columns. It's not going to work if there's no column one there. You've got to get it back. And the easiest way is to reset the memory. Again, there's no programs on these that I need to keep. That's why you can reset the memory on mine. So we go stat, edit. We type in the numbers. They're going to be smaller sets, so not super large. 50, 54, 55. 47, 43, 41, 36, 49, 43, 49. So there's 10 numbers there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We quit out. We go stat, calc, and we use one variable stats. We just choose that. We got our mean, 46 and 7 tenths. Right there. We got our, mo our median of 48. And then there's two modes here, 43 and 49. Multiple choice should be easy to prick the right answers. All right. So that's questions one through four. All right. You can also use five, six, seven, and eight doing the same thing. So if I want a standard deviation here, just arrow down or arrow up. The 5.64 is a standard deviation on this particular set. And if I wanted the quartiles, the lower and the upper quartile, lower quartile again is quartile one, 43 on this set. And the upper quartile would be 50, and the quartile range would be 50 minus 43, which would be 7. So that's the entire first page, questions 1 through 8. And the uh, first two on the back as well. You're just using one var stats or interpreting the one variable stats. So if you can't type this in a calculator for the test on Friday, you're going to have issues. You're going to have major issues. All right. So on the back. Questions uh, 9 and 10, we already went over those. All right, so question 11. All I want you to do, all I want you to do in uh, number 11 is draw the box and whiskers, so you're going to do the same thing for it. So I quit out of here. I go stat. I go edit. I clear at the top. Push clear. And I push down. Type in the stats. 12, 14, 5.4, 41, 13.6. 46.8, 41.6, 26.56.8, and 28.8. So I got 10 numbers there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to go stat, calc. Still going to do one bar stats. So that's questions 1 through 11. We're using the same button. All right, what I need from this, I need the minimum, which is 5.4. That's where the graph is going to start. Five and four tenths, box and whisker. Quartile one is going to be the first part of the box, which is 13.6. In the middle of the box is going to be the median, which is 27 and four tenths. And at the end of the box is going to be the quartile three, 41 and six tenths. And at the end of the graph is going to be 56.8. That's my box and whisker. You're just identifying the min, quartile one, median. Quartile three and the maximum. I don't care if it's a scale. All right. So remember, on number twelve, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if I square this, I will get the variance. Four point five six squared. So why do we use standard deviation instead of variance? Sometimes variance is negative. Sometimes it's positive. So we use standard deviation so that it's always a positive value. That's why standard deviation is used instead of variance. And as we go around to the tenth here, 20 and 8 tenths. All right, so Joe's, John's height is 74. The average height is 65. So what I'm going to do is take his height minus the average. That's 9. So he's 9 inches above average. Every 4 inches is a standard deviation. So I'm going to divide this by 4, and it's going to give me what's called the Z-score or how many standard deviations he is from the mean height. 
So 9 fourths. I can leave that as a fraction. If I prefer a decimal, I can use a decimal. It's going to be decimal here. 2.25. Two and a quarter standard deviations above the mean. That doesn't, that doesn't mean he's double the mean. He's not double the mean. He's two and a quarter standard deviations above the mean. Alright, so here we got a local news station. They're going to survey the people of Las Vegas about a proposed tax increase to pay for roads. They decide to ask people next on the street next to their station, is this survey biased? So the question would be, does everybody go to the street next to their station? Or are there people that don't go there? And the obvious answer is there's people that don't go to that street. So there is some bias here because some people won't go to that street. Won't ever go there. There'd be no reason for some people to go there. Other people, they'd be there every day. Maybe they work next door or something. So they're going to survey the people in the neighborhood next to their station. That's what they're going to survey, not the people in the whole city of Las Vegas. All right, so here I got three classes. The average heights are slightly different, but two of them are the same. The standard deviations are all different. Which class is the largest? So the smaller the deviation, the larger the sample size, as we talked about during the notes. So here we've got a 3, a 2.5, and a 1.5. This is the largest class. So Mr. Jones has the largest class here of the group of, 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 the group of uh, teachers because his standard deviation is the smallest. Or maybe he has the most people that were surveyed. Maybe there was more people gone in the other classes that day, but he has the largest class because the standard deviation is the smallest. All right, question 16. Margin of error is equal to 1 divided by square root of n. So if I've got a margin of error of 4%, 4% equals 1 divided by root n. We're going to move the root n over here with the 4%, make it a decimal, 0 0.04 root n equals 1. So we're going to move the root, the 0.4 over the, underneath the 1, the square root of n is equal to 1 divided by 4%. So I'm going to divide that out, 1 divided by 4%, that gives me 25. The square root of n is equal to 25, and I'm going to square that. 25 squared. There were 625 people in this sample. All right. So we're going to use the same statistics on number 17 as we used on 16. So what is the actual percent of people who plan to vote for the sheriff? Well, it's going to be between... 53 plus 4%, 57%, 53 and 53 minus 4%, 49%. So somewhere between 49 and 57% of the people will vote for the sheriff, meaning that he's not guaranteed to win. If less than half the people vote for him, he's not guaranteed. All right, so here, margin of error is equal to 1 divided by the square root of sample size. So my error is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 200 here. This, again, is always expressed as a percentage. 1 divided by the square root of 200 is about 7%, 7.1 when it rounds per, in the, as a percentage. So this is about 0 0.071, 7 and 1 tenth of percent. Round of the tenths on all these questions. Tenths meaning tenth percent here because this is always a percent answer. Margin of error. All right, so sketch a normal curve for a data set with a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of 4. So again, we take our mean, we place it in the middle, and we go 3 above and 3 below. So this will be 56, 52, and 48. This will be 64, 68, and 72. And our curve will be the normal bell curve as it comes up and comes down. There we go. And then number 20 is what we're talking about today. I have forgotten the percentages, but they are in our notebook, so I will look them up briefly. Here they are. So again, within one deviation is 34% on each side. Within two is another 13 and a half. Within three is another 2.35. So what we have to ask here is where are we looking at? We're looking from 60 to 72. That's three deviations. So I'm going to take these three numbers and add them together. 
plus 13 and a half percent plus two and 35 hundredths of percent. I'm going to put these percentages up on the board when you come in tomorrow for, uh, for the test on Friday. So uh, you're not going to have to memorize these percentages. You're going to have to know how to use them. So I'll put this chart up for you. So add those up. It's going to be roughly 50% because it's really close to half. 49.85. I also could have did 50 minus the 0.15. And got the answer quickly, more quickly. So 49.85% will be within three standard deviations of the mean. Anyways, I know that was quick. I had some issues with this week with my house, so I haven't had time really to do a longer review. But I've gone through all the questions on the back that are right on. And then these ones, again, it's just doing your stat, edit, and then one bar stats. I'll go through that again with number nine. So stat, edit, we clear by going to the top and pushing clear and pushing down. They each have 10 numbers. So 13, 7, 10 5, 7 .5, 7, 8 .5, 6, 6 .5, 9, and 9. We quit out. We calculate the one variable stats. All right, what did I want here? I wanted the quartile 1 and quartile 3. It's the main thing, 7 and 9. Quartile 1 is 7, quartile 3 is 9. There we go. This one. And then, of course, the inner quartile range is 2, and the mode is 7 because there's two 7s. All right. There we go. Good luck.